resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Edmonton Riverbend. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, and uh, it's a pleasure to join you here from beautiful Edmonton Riverbend, albeit a little snowy here today. Uh, I'm pleased to participate in the debate to speak about Bill C-12. I want to start specifically by addressing how bills like this impact my home province of Alberta. Most Canadians are aware of how tough times have been here in Alberta over the past several years. Thousands upon thousands of jobs have been lost in the energy sector, and my city here in Edmonton has an unemployment rate of over 12%. Calgary is about the same. These two cities already had some of the, bright, the highest unemployment rates in the country before the COVID-19 pandemic. The pandemic has made the situation even worse. Unfortunately, many businesses will not reopen and many Albertans will have no jobs to return to after the pandemic is over. Why have times been so tough for Alberta? Federal government legislation that appeared designed to decimate the energy industry and rapidly deplete the oil and gas industry has been introduced. Bill C-69 overhauled federal environmental assessment processes for construction projects, effectively deterring investment in Alberta. Bill C-48 bars oil tankers from loading at ports in northern BC, making it impossible to export Alberta oil to new markets. And on top of all that, we suffered through the regulatory attack like no other from the Notley NDP government, which really set us back decades. Then, just as all this was occurring, the government announced a new clean fuel standard, which is yet another blow to Alberta. Honestly, it will be impossible for Alberta to fully recover with yet more regulation that makes our province unattractive to investors. Our leading edge energy industry won't be competitive against other countries if we have so many regulations tacked on by the federal government. To help counteract this attack, the Alberta government just launched a natural gas strategy that would see the province become a leader in hydrogen production and liquefied natural gas for export. Natural gas will be regulated under the clean fuel standard. No other jurisdiction in the world is applying this type of standard to liquefied natural gas. But again, the clean fuel standard will once again exacerbate the economic depression as as, as reported from the Canadians for Affordable Energy, which estimates this standard will cause 30,000 job losses nas nationally and at least 20 billion of capital will leave Canada. Alberta will be dis disproportionately experience this loss, but all Canada will be impacted. Now, I agree with my colleagues across the aisle that is well-intentioned to strive toward net zero emissions. However, we do differ on how to get there. Harnessing the energy sector and its talent is, in my opinion, key to meeting that target. We must include energy industry stakeholders when developing any environmental plans. And from what we've been hearing initially on Bill C-12, the government has failed to do just that. At the end of the day, climate change is a global problem that requires a global solution. For decades more, the world will continue to be using oil and gas. The question then becomes is whether energy will come from democratic countries like Canada with strong environmental protections or dictatorships with no environmental protections or respect for human rights. Domestic energy production, including oil and gas, is an important part of making our country more self-reliant and more resilient in the future. In today's world, we cannot afford to become reliable energy from any other countries, and quite honestly, we have no need to. Getting to a net zero emissions in the energy industry requires a plan, and not just a plan to have a plan. What we see here is a mission to develop a plan in the future, and this government's plan is already being poked full of holes. A focus could have been on harnessing energy and the use of technologies from sources such as nuclear and wind carbon capture, with the government providing incentives similar to those that were used to stimulate the early development of the oil sands. Many governments have a long record of practical and successful environmental initiatives. Under a previous Conservative government, Canada successfully tackled acid rain, expanded national parks, and removed dangerous chemicals from the biosphere. We, we must persevere our shared environment for future generations without sacrificing the jobs Canadians need today or damaging the economic engine that helps fund our vital social programs. A recent report from the Canada Energy Regulator found that even with policies in place to curb emissions, oil and gas will still make up two-thirds of energy sources in 2050. This report 
also found there will be increased demand for natural gas, which I mentioned before as a fuel that will become more heavily regulated under the clean fuel standard. This is again a deterrent for investors in foreign markets. We have an opportunity, Madam Speaker, to help with emissions globally by being part of the switch from coal-fired plants in Asia and other parts of the world to natural gas, a much cleaner form of energy. Exporting our natural gas, our technology, and our talent to other parts of the world will go a long way in the fight against climate change. Removing coal-fired plants makes a huge dent in emissions globally. We all agree that everyone has a role to play in tackling climate change, and Canada is no exception. But aggressively regulating our energy industry where there is still no demand for its products is short-sighted. We can do more good globally by using our technologies and oil and gas to help tackle climate change both abroad and in Canada than by abruptly shutting it down. Natural gas is a huge opportunity for Canada to be a world player in other markets. More excessive regulation by the federal government not only hinders this opportunity, but threatens the livelihoods of many Canadian families. The spill before us will set targets to achieve net zero greenhouse gas emissions by the year 2050. This is a laudable goal, and I want to be clear that I fully support, but is once again a big shiny object over here being used to distract Canadians when the government can't be clear on what the end vision of their plan is to get there. Is this a bill to strike a 12-person committee? Then, then be honest. Tell us that. Don't promise that this is a visionary piece of legislation that requires three ministers to walk across an open field that some communications person somewhere decided would make good optics to distract the Canadian public. We see this government continue to make new environmental commitments while still failing to meet their previous climate promises. The government's own projections show they're not even close to meeting their current commitments, yet they are setting new targets that are higher and even further into the future. According to the Parliamentary Budget Officer, Canada is on track to significantly miss its 2030 emissions commitments. And the 2 billion trees promised in the last election? I haven't seen a single tree planted by these guys. Actually, there isn't even a, a plan to plant a tree, let alone a budget to do it. Mr. S Madam Speaker, I for one would really like to work with my colleagues across the aisle to produce a comprehensive plan to tackle greenhouse gas emissions to meet net zero emissions by 2050. I have kids and I desperately want their future to include a safe and healthy environment. But it's hard to support this government when it delivers an optical illusion of a plan that continues to include more regulations and taxes that hurt our economy by deterring investment in Canada. Life has become more expensive for Canadians as a result. Eventually, eventually, Canadians are going to ask, at what cost, Madam Speaker? I truly believe here in Canada we can develop a plan that harnesses the technology and brain power of our energy industry to help other countries transition to energy sources that are much less harmful to the environment. We can make Canada and Canadian energy independent instead of importing oil from countries with brutal regimes and human rights abuses. We can remove regulations and red tape and at the same time make Canada more attractive for international investment. I'm here and I'm fully on board for achieving a net zero goal and we can do this this by creating a comprehensive plan and policies. But we simply need the government to work with us in opposition as opposed to continually pretending to the world that they care without any necessary targets that are required. I plead to the government to please consider working with us, especially at the Environment Committee, to strengthen this bill so we get it right for all Canadians. Thank you, Madam Speaker.